Wondering if IPv4 and IPv6 can coexist? Today on Junos Connect, we'll cover everything from technologies for an IPv4 exhausted world to the latest IPv6 configuration book. Hi, I'm Kara Suboy. Welcome to Junos Connect, your one-stop video source for all things Junos. With all the new devices connecting to the internet, internet addresses are being rapidly consumed. Today we're talking with Ravi Pentaconti about what Juniper is doing around the IPv4 and IPv6 address challenges. Welcome, Ravi. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Kara. The recent IANA announcement about the IPv4 address depletion got a lot of media attention, even from mainstream media. It, it makes it sound like this is a really huge, serious deal. That's true, Kara. I mean, it's been made out to be a lot bigger than it is. Yeah. First and foremost, I'd like to take this opportunity to tell folks not to be worried. Okay. The world is not coming to an end, and we'll certainly keep communicating with each other and all our devices, and there are over a gazillion devices in the planet, as we know, we'll still be talking to each other. That is very good news. Thank you for that reinsurance. But what kind of impact will this depletion have on our customers? In most cases, close to none. The simple fact is, Juniper as a company offers a whole range of products and solutions, wherein we offer customers simple solutions if they want just IPv6, mm -hmm. or there might be cases, and in most cases, they probably want to see a coexistence of IPv4 and IPv6-based devices, and we do offer those. And within that, there's a whole plethora of technologies that we offer. So we really have a set of solutions that we can tailor make to the customer's needs rather than try and choose a cookie cutter approach. So what exactly is Juniper advocating? At this juncture, very simply, we're asking customers to do two things. Number one, take stock of their deployment and see where they are in the address uh, usage point of view. And number two, try and look at where the growth is coming in. Once they have done those two, they can go back and visit our website and look at a whole range of products and solutions we offer and then decide as to which of those actually meets their needs. And finally, of course, they can come, uh, always come and talk to us and we may, we'll be more than happy to walk them through the solution sets. And I'm sure another piece of advice you give is not to panic. Everything's Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Everything's going to no be okay. There's no reason to panic. It's going to be great. And I think uh, the kind of things that we have done at Juniper for the last uh, 10 plus years will help us. Uh, it actually uh, reminds me to point out that Juno's for the last 10 years has had IPv6 support. Mm -hmm. So it's not new to us. Uh, we have had tremendous presence on various bodies. Uh, and we have a good set of uh, technical depth in the company to actually help the customers guide them through the process of evaluating the right solution and then obviously helping them deploy it. Well, I'm so happy to hear that Juniper is prepared and thanks so much for the reassurance. Thanks, Kara. Appreciate it. For more information, be sure to visit the Juniper IPv6 site. The main benefit for our Juniper customers for Net 404 is it's... Don't go anywhere. Coming up next, hear about a technology that will address the IPv4 exhaustion and IPv6 migration woes. If you're looking for information about Junos, go to Junos Central. There, we'll tell you about the latest webcasts. Plus, we'll have an archive of the ones we've already done. You're also going to find day one booklets. We have the books, information about the books, and the bios of all the authors. Just go to www.juniper.net slash Junos. You can even find all the Junos Connect videos. I'm just saying. Welcome back to Junos Connect, your video source for Junos technology and news. I'm Kara Suboy. With the impending threat of the IPv4 address depletion and the number of technologies out there to help, what should you use? Today we have Paul Abbott here to help you decide. Thanks for joining us, Paul. Thank you for having me. Why don't you start by telling us some of the solutions Juniper has to offer for customers facing the IPv4 address depletion? Juniper has a very rich suite of IPv6 transition uh, methodologies and features. Uh, what we'd like to talk about today, though, is uh, NAT444, which most of our, a lot of our customers are very interested in since uh, the global IPv4 address depletion. So we've got NAT44 and now NAT444. Tell us about the differences and distinctions between the two. The main distinction really is the fact that there's now another layer of NAT between the customer and the service they're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's actually really the only real distinction between NAT44 and NAT444. 
What are some of the benefits of NAT444? The main benefit for our Juniper customers for NAT444 is it's the uh, low-hanging fruit or the easiest implementation for uh, to mitigate IPv4 address depletion within uh, their networks. What would you say some of the shortcomings are or could be? Really the only shortcoming is the fact that uh, applications nowadays are used to having NAT44, which is the single layer mm -hmm. of NAT between, themse between themselves and uh, the service they're trying to get to. Whereas NAT44 adds another layer uh, in between and uh, could cause some challenges for applications to get to, their, to the services they're trying to get to. You mentioned earlier that Juniper has a rich suite of solution. What are some of the other options? Some of the other ones are NAT64, which is address uh, family translation between V6 and V4. Uh, we also have tunneling technologies such as 6RD and DS Lite, which are other two very uh, popular uh, transition methods. It's great that we have a lot of options to offer. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate mm -hmm. it, Paul. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. For more information, you can visit the Juniper website. The new book takes it the next step, which covers... It's day one, and you need to deploy IPv6. Where do you start? Stay tuned and find out. Looking for answers to questions about Juniper products? Join JNet and tap into the collective knowledge of a global community. Find solutions from Juniper users, experts, and Juno certified engineers. Register for your free user account and join the conversation from your mobile or your computer. Go to the link on your screen to sign up now. Welcome back to Juno's Connect. I'm Kara Suboy. Today we have day one book author Chris Grundeman to tell us about his IPv6 books. Welcome, Chris. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And I know this is your second book on IPv6. Obviously a really hot topic these days. It really is. Uh, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, which is the global free pool for IPv4 addresses, has run out this year, right. which has really turned IPv6 on in a lot of people's minds. So take us back to your first book. Give us some background on that book and what people can learn from it. Sure. Exploring IPv6 covers everything you need to turn on IPv6 in a LAN. So it covers interface addressing, static routing up to IGPs, both OSPF and RIPNG. And what about this new book? The new book takes it the next step, which covers BGP, both IBGP and EBGP. And it also covers some ancillary tasks like multicast, firewall filters, and class of service, things to tie it all together. Okay, and who would you say these books are really geared toward? Yeah, they're geared to someone who's run an IPv4 network and is either new to Junos or new to IPv6, who's rolling this out in either their lab or their production environment. And where do you go from here? What's, what should be the next book to be read? I think the Juniper technical publications are definitely where the rest of the meat is, all the details and, and things you need to uh, roll this out the rest of the way. How in the world, as someone like a, a non-Juniper employee, how did you get into writing these books? So actually I was working with um, our resident engineer, Nate Day, uh, on writing a book and we found out about the Day One program and it looked like a really approachable way to get into being a published author. Any challenges or difficulties in writing these books? Um, just the timing because it was a spare time kind of project. It was nights yeah. and weekends and getting it done when I could. So staying on a timeline and, and getting it done in a reasonable amount of time was, was challenging. But hey, you're a published author now. That's pretty fantastic. Absolutely. What is your day job? What do you do when you're not working on these books? So right now I'm an IP architect at Cable Labs and I'm working on helping them update their specifications for IPv6 and also working with the cable operators to deploy IPv6. Any f you know future books? coming up? Potentially. We've, we've talked about another book probably on transition technologies, on keep uh, transition from IPv4 to IPv6, coexistence between the two, topics like DS Lite, 6RD, and carrier grade NAT. Any release date that you can tell us now? No. Nothing no, yet? Okay. It hasn't been started yet. Okay. Well, we'll stay tuned. Thank you so much for your time, Chris. Thank you. For more information, you can download your free copies on the juniper.net slash day one website. That's it for this episode. I'm Kara Suboy. We'll see you next time right here on Junos Connect.